Hello and welcome to our show. Today we are going to be discussing plant nutrition and photosynthesis. Plant nutrition. Nutrition. Nutrition is taking in useful substances. You may recall that nutrition is one of the characteristics of a living thing and therefore it is important that living things take in useful substances ideal for their growth using nutrition. Photosynthesis. This is the process by which plants manufacture carbohydrates from raw materials using energy from light. Photosynthesis is extremely important in the plant's nutrition. Photo means light and synthesis means manufacturing. Chlorophyll, the plant power station. Chlorophyll is a green pigment that is inside a chloroplast molecule. When the sun shines on a chlorophyll molecule, some of the energy in the light is absorbed by it. The chlorophyll molecule then releases the trapped energy. The released energy makes carbon combine with water. This is done with the help of enzymes in the chloroplast. This causes glucose to be made. The glucose contains energy from the light. Thus, the light energy is converted into chemical energy in photosynthesis. The equation for photosynthesis. Word equation. Chemical equation. Leaves, the plant nutritionists. A leaf contains palisade cells, which contain chloroplasts, which contain chlorophyll molecules, which contain the enzymes that catalyze photosynthesis. Marvellous, right? Although a bit of a mouthful. Let's learn about the leaf structure now. The transverse structure of a leaf. Here follows the leaf parts and their functions. The upper epidermis does not contain chloroplasts. It is used to protect inner layers of cells and to secrete a waxy substance called the cuticle that covers the upper epidermis. The cuticle helps in lowering transpiration rates. The lower epidermis contains small openings called stomata. It protects inner layers of cells and helps in the gas exchange by using stomata. Guard cells contain chloroplasts. They control the movement of substances in and out of stomata. Palisade mesophyll cells contain many chloroplasts as compared to other plant cells so that they can carry out photosynthesis. Spongy mesophyll cells are used to carry out photosynthesis. Air spaces help in the diffusion of oxygen and carbon dioxide. The xylem tube carries water to the mesophyll cells and the phloem tube is used to take away substances such as sucrose that the leaf has made. Adaptations and why they are essential. The ability to be supported by stem and petiole to expose most of the leaf to the maximum amount of sunlight and air. A large surface area to expose the cells to the largest amount of sunlight as possible. Thin layered to allow sunlight to reach all cells, CO2 to diffuse in and O2 to diffuse out. The palisade cells are arranged end on or vertically to keep as few cell walls as possible between sunlight and the chloroplasts. Chloroplasts are arranged broadside on, horizontally, to expose maximum amount of chlorophyll to sunlight. Chlorophyll is present in cells in the mesophyll layer to absorb energy from the sunlight so that carbon dioxide combines with water. 
there are no chloroplasts in the epidermal layer. This is to allow sunlight to reach the cells in the mesophyll layer. The stomata is located in the lower epidermis to allow CO2 to diffuse in and O2 to diffuse out. There are air spaces in spongy mesophyll to allow CO2 and O2 to diffuse in and out of cells during photosynthesis. Chlorophyll is arranged on flat membranes inside of chloroplasts to expose maximum amount of chlorophyll to sunlight. Xylem vessels are within short proximity of mesophyll cells to supply water to the mesophyll cells for photosynthesis and other functions. Phloem vessels are also within short proximity of mesophyll cells to carry away sucrose and other organic products of photosynthesis. Uses of glucose in the plant's nutrition Used for energy Energy can be released from glucose using aerobic respiration. Stored as starch because it is a large molecule, it is unreactive, it is not very soluble, it can be turned into small pieces and can be easily stored inside chloroplasts. It is not stored as glucose because glucose is reactive, soluble in water, is a small molecule, may be lost from plant cells when dissolved in water, may indulge in unwanted chemical reactions in the cells and may increase the glucose concentration in the cell and cause damage. Used to make proteins, nitrate molecules are mixed with glucose to form strands of amino acids which are bound into proteins. Used to make organic substances such as sucrose, cellulose, chlorophyll using nitrogen and magnesium, fats and oils. Transformed to sucrose for transport. Why sucrose is changed for transport is because it is less reactive, small molecules and soluble in sap in phloem vessels. Mineral ions required by plants. The mineral ion nitrogen, element nitrates or ammonium ions, have the function of building proteins but the deficiency of a weak growth and yellow leaves. Magnesium, element magnesium ions, is used to make chlorophyll but has the deficiency of yellowing between veins of the leaves. Limiting factors. A limiting factor is something present in the environment in such short supply that it restricts life processes. This means that nutrition is restricted at a certain level and that the plant is at its peak of growth. Here is a list of limiting factors you need to know. Sunlight. As light intensity increases, the rate of photosynthesis will increase as well. But at a certain point, even if the light gets brighter, the rate of photosynthesis will not increase. Carbon dioxide. Similarly, the more the carbon dioxide concentration increases, the more the photosynthesis rate until a maximum is reached. Temperature. A plant photosynthesizes at a greater rate when temperatures are warmer as opposed to colder. Stomata. If stomata are closed, then photosynthesis cannot take place. On a warm, sunny day, stomata often close to decrease transpiration rates. Hence, this can lead to low photosynthesis rates. Glass houses, the tools to maximize nutrition. Plants can be grown in glass houses where environmental conditions can be controlled and hence the plant's nutrition can be enhanced. These environmental conditions include light, temperature, carbon dioxide concentration, soil pH level, and moisture or water levels. Light. A range of light intensities can be provided at the correct wavelengths to the plant even in cloudy and dark conditions. Temperature. 
the temperature of the glasshouse can be controlled with heating and cooling equipment so that the plant gets the optimal temperature to photosynthesize. Carbon dioxide concentration. As the natural carbon dioxide concentration is very low, 0.04%, plants cannot photosynthesize at greater rates, whereas in a glass house it is possible to control carbon dioxide concentrations. The importance of photosynthesis. It brings the energy of sun into ecosystems. It is essential for maintaining a constant global level of oxygen and carbon dioxide and it helps to stop the level of carbon dioxide rising too high. This is the end of our guide. Thank you for listening and we hope that you found it informative. Next we will be discussing animal nutrition. Please remember to like, comment, share and subscribe for more. Until next time, take care.